Praise y'all. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and get started. Yes.
Hallelujah. This is the copyright and fair, act, fair use act. This presentation may contain select segments or in hold of copyrighted material in a good faith effort to educate and inform our audience in trans transformation transformative manner. We believe constitutes a fair use of such of any such copyrighted material as provided for in section 107 of the U.S. copyright laws. Skip down to the other highlighted part. The content is presented for study, for research, and for educational purposes. The presenter gains no profit from presenting content, so it falls under the fair use guidelines. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people, again, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being a priest for me. Because you have forgotten the Torah, the law of your Elohim, I will also forget your children. Hallelujah. The renewed covenant comes out of Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 33. It says, Behold, the days are coming, said Yahuwah. Yes, and we 
we thank you and we count it as an honor and a privilege to praise and worship you on this day that you chose. Yes, sir. That you chose. Yes, sir. For your people to assemble. Father, we thank you for every ministry thank all across you. this vast thank earth you. that's you. ministering and teaching yes. your Torah, your teachings, your yes. instructions. Yes. Yes. Father, now we look to all of the heads of the leaders of those assemblies, Father. Hallelujah. Let them know not to be weary in well-doing, yes. that they will reach if they do not faint. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you, Father, for every family thank you, that is represented in this place, thank you, every Father. bloodline that's in this place. Yes. Father,
born that can show people Hallelujah. shall prosper. Yeah, and I'm told that right against you and judgment shall be proven to all. But this is the inheritance of your set apart one. For our righteousness is of you. Oh, thus saith the master, Yah, will these dry bones live?
Generation from Santa. 
walk around and just begin to hug people. And just begin to love on them because the presence of your Lord is here.
a ser.
and introduce our speaker for today. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today being the day chosen by the Most High. Hallelujah. A Sabbath day Sabbath for people. For those who choose him as he's chosen us. Today we are so elated to be with you seventh day. We're just honored to be here today. see the move of Yahweh, Maury Douglas, Miss Isha, prophetess, we're always happy to be in your fellowship, seeing the beautiful and smiling faces, we get such a warm welcome when we come. Like we're sisters and brothers. Yes. And we love you just that way. Because we know with you, as Moray would say, we're stronger. Together we're strong. And we know that Yahuwah. matter how we learned him, but it does matter how we get to know him. In the learning part, we come seeking, but in the knowing part, we get to know him in his word. So today, I count it an honor to bring to you our son, one who we've never had to truly worry about. From the moment he was born until his day, all you have to do is just be around him for a moment and you can kind of begin to learn him. Learn that he is a man of integrity, yes. wisdom, understanding, knowledge. He has tapped into the greatest reservoir that can ever be. Hallelujah. He has tapped into A reservoir of water that shall never run dry. Hallelujah. It's known as living waters. See, Rabbis and myself gave him over years ago to the Most High. Yes. And he stayed right there where we left him. In the hands of the one we know will do a much better job than we. That's right. He belongs to the Creator. Now, and this day, I count it an honor, joy, and privilege to bring to your front. One who really don't need to be introduced. If you're around him for a few minutes, you'll get to know him. Can you help me welcome Rabbi Two? Come on, give Yahweh a praise for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Most High. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Truly blessed me with um, a wonderful, wonderful family, a wonderful mother, a wonderful father. Um, praise Yah for my wife, for Sharika in her absence. So, <laughs> praise Yah. And I'm truly grateful. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Extended family. Hallelujah. Thank you. As as has already been stated, you know, every time we come, we are always excited to be here with you. Yes. 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 Our family. Period. Yes. That's right. Absolutely. Period. Point blank. That's right. And so we thank you for inviting us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for your hospitality. Absolutely. Thank you for being you. To the shepherds and overseers of this assembly, praise Yah for you, Maury Douglas, Prophetess Douglas. Can we give them a hand? Thank you. So this is who you are. Being who, who, who the Most High has called you to be, and not being afraid of that calling. Um, there were many leaders that we have spoken to, have come into contact now through the years, that will reveal, yeah, I, I, I kind of, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I, 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 I don't know if the people are going to listen. I don't know if the people are going to follow. I don't know if the people are going to keep paying their time. I mean, I don't know if the people are going to buy all the way in. I mean, I might lose my people. But praise Yah when he can find people who says, you know what? I yield. Period. I yield. I accept my correction. I accept that I was walking contrary to the Most High. I accept that. And I won't continue to walk in that way, but I will walk in his Torah, walk in his laws, his teachings and instructions. And so that's where we find ourselves in the laws, the teachings, and the instructions of the Most High. Hallelujah. Because he found people who were not ashamed. He found people yes. who were not afraid. Hallelujah. He found people who were not worried about the repercussions of those decisions. So praise Yah for great leaders. I thank him for MHG. Thank yes. you for being here. Yeah. Yeah. MHG, is, oh, MHG is everywhere you want to be. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, 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 I thank y'all for those, those people. How awesome um, they are. Really, they are a blessing. And so praise God because he has blessed us with awesome people. Yes. Hallelujah. He has blessed us with awesome, awesome people. Hallelujah. So I thank him for that. Um, he is truly holy, worthy. And uh, we're gonna pray and we're gonna we're gonna jump into uh, what we have for this afternoon. Y'all, I move around a little bit, so you at home, um, brother. Um, Stay too still, too far, too too long. So. Um, but let's pray. Father, we thank you. Father, give me praise and glory and honor, Father. Thank you for all that you are, all that you do, Father. For you have blessed us and allowed us to come to this point. Father, you blessed us and allowed us to come to this particular place, Father. Uh, not just in a physical location, Father, but also in a space of time. Yes. yes. You have allowed us to see. And we thank you, Father, that you have given us this day our daily bread father we thank you that you have given us your shabbat yes. that we can take this time to rest to restore to renew father 
Uh, we thank you that you have given it to us as a gift. Yes. Now we know it as a gift. It is not something that we have to do, but it is something that we are blessed to do. It is not something that we are simply commanded to keep, but it's something that we are excited to keep. Your Shabbat, your time of rest, Father, your set-apart time. So, Father, we pray that as we go forth in this time of teaching and learning, Father, that you would be with us, Father, that you would give us uh, the meat that we are to receive, Father. Allow us to glean from your table, Father, that you would give and we would receive, Father, for the word says that there is one that plants, that is one that waters, but it is you, yes. oh Father, who gives the increase, Father. Yes. So we thank you yes. for your increase. Yes. We thank you yes. for your touching of that seed and allowing it to grow, yes. oh Father. We bless you. We give you praise, give you glory and honor, Father. It's in the name of Yeshua we do pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can we give Yahweh a praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly worthy of all of the praise and all of the glory that we can ever give. He is worthy of it. There is never enough. There is never enough. He has truly blessed us. And so we have to bless him. Yes. He's blessed us, y'all. Yes, he has. We have to bless him. Yes. Trying to figure out yes. us a little bit closer to him. Disclosure, uh, this teaching is uh, like three three full teachings long. Uh, so I'm not going to make y'all sit through like three full teachings worth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the, the most of the meat comes in the beginning of this teaching. And I think that it's important because uh, I think it is extremely important for us to understand what we're up against. Um, and in a lot of cases, we are challenged by thoughts and theories and we're constantly unlearning. That's something that, that we figure out. We've been now um, in this walk, in this on this journey uh, since 2000, and, well 2000, so 22 years. Wow. Uh, wow. 2000, 2001. 2001. Wow. So 21 years. Um, this 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 year makes 21 years. So, but it's, it's still constantly unlearning, unlearning and relearning. Um, that's because even even though that was 21 years ago, man, that is exactly half my life. That means soon I will enter into being in the walk longer than not being. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So if you're doing the math, that makes it 42. <laughs> uh, so, but but the, the, just as much time as was spent putting in and getting all of that stuff, that a lot of it was wrong. And I'm not one of those people that will tell you everything you learn in church, get rid of it. Because there are those brews out there. Yeah. I'm not one. Right. Me either. I'm not going to tell you, That's oh, right. nah, you don't need no praise worship. Oh, you don't need to rejoice. Oh, all you need is the Torah. Oh, you don't need no spirit of the, of the Most High. You don't need none of that. Just learn the Torah. Just be able to fuss and argue with somebody and, and prove them wrong. I'm not going to tell you that. Nope. I'm going to tell you that we learned some things that are foundational that got us here. That's right. And now we have to realize that some of it, as I start digging into it, y'all get into a good piece of fish and you start digging into it and you then bit in one of the little tiny bones, you're like, oh, that hurt. Yeah. Then you start looking a little closer, trying to get rid of them, right? Yeah. I'm one of the people that can't stand to get them little bones. So I sit there and we'll pick, I will stare and pick everyone out and 
good gracious, I just can't stand it. <laughs> just can't stand it. Um, but you take the time to get rid of it. Why? Did you want to get rid of the fish? No. You just need to get rid of the bones. That's right. There was still some meat there. Yeah, so we don't need to get rid of, it, of everything. But there are some things that we learn that we've got to relearn. And we have to now understand who our teacher is. Yes. Understand that the spirit is our teacher. And the yes. spirit of truth. We're being led into all truths. Yes. Right? Yeah. right? And the Torah is the truth. Yeah. It is the truth. Yeah. And so that is where we get our understanding. So this message is, and there's there's some things I'll kind of jump back to give a little bit of things because there's some stuff that's mixed in with another teaching that I did before I started this particular series. Um, but I'm going to give you as much meat as I can. And um, if you want to get like the full teaching, there's three teachings on our YouTube. You can just put in public enemy number one, scroll back. It's probably about five, six years old. So just scroll back through there and there are all three of them are there as well as the other one, understanding defensive systems. And so understanding this, we have to learn who our enemy is. Any good military strategy will have one of the biggest things present or they are nothing. And that is intelligence. What's intelligence? The understanding of your enemy. Mm. Knowing who your enemy is. Because right. if you don't have that understanding, your enemy surely does. Mm -hmm. Which means your enemy will be always playing offense mm -hmm. while you are always playing defense. Come on, sir. Wow. <laughs> And if you're playing defense, you will have no idea where it's coming from, how it's coming. Gun. You don't know who's in, who's out, who's where. Gun. You know? Gun. And so it's important. Intelligence is critically important. Critically important. So understanding our enemy is important. And I think one thing that we've lost a little bit of sight on is, is, is who he is, um, what he is. And so... Uh, the name of this teaching is Public Enemy Number One, Understanding Our Adversary. Yes. Understanding Our Adversary. And so first, let's just begin by looking at um, what Satan means. Like just the, the, the word, we hear Satan all the time. Uh, it's actually a Hebrew word. Um, and so, of course, you know, you hear people refer to him as the devil um, the adversary, um, Satan is the word for uh, accuser or adversary. Accuser or adversary. And so it's three Hebrew letters you can kind of see right here. Um, the first letter from right to left is sin. That first letter is a sin, and, and it's a sign of teeth. And so you see... Uh, well, there in the back, I was going to point to the board, but um, back there, you kind of see how it's shaped. Well, you can see it here. So it kind of resembles mm -hmm. teeth, and that's the sign that's used to represent the sin or the shin, that letter. Okay? And then it's followed in the middle by a tet. The tet is a letter that stands for serpent. And so you have teeth, serpent, and the last letter that's sate, so the and the t and then the noon is the last letter, which is uh, a sign of seed, seed. And so this this uh, even in that word, him being the accuser or the one that attacks, the one that attacks um, the adversary, is that. The teeth of the serpent is trying to generate seed. He's trying to generate seed. What does that mean? What is seed there to do? Let everything produce after its own kind. He wants to produce after himself, after his own kind. He wants to produce more adversaries. He wants to produce more resistance. 
And we're going to go into why that is. We're going to go into why that is. And um, these are the objectives that, that we look that this teaching looks at. Again, I'm not going to get to all of them, but we'll hit um, we'll, we'll hit the first three for sure. And so it's what or who he is. It's one. Two is what is his objective? Like mm. What is his ultimate goal? What is he trying to accomplish? Three is what is his authority level? That's important to understand. Very important to understand. And then four is where is he? And five is what is his future? We'll get a little bit of all of this as we go through, but I'm going to pull out um, some particulars as we as we as we come through this so um let's start by looking at something that's very very important to understand we've misunderstood a lot of this for some time um but we're going to use the scripture to to help uh clarify some of this so here's the first thing we got to understand satan is not the opposite and equal of yahweh mm. He is not the opposite and equal. Come on. He's not the evil to y'all's good. He's not the yin to his gang. He's not the up to his down. He's not, he's not the black to his white. He's not the equal and opposite. That's good. Okay? So, in other words, we can't say, well, everything good comes from y'all and everything evil comes from the devil. Yeah. That's not how it works. Yahweh created everything. good and evil. That's what it says. He created love and guess what? Hate. And guess what? He loves and he hates. God. God. <laughs> and so understanding this is a general framework. Again, this is the broadest stroke that I could think is we sometimes think of well, it's not the devil, it's God. It's kind of like, you know, the opposite. You know, he's just the opposite of the most high. And when we do that, we automatically give him way more power than he really God. has. God. Talk about it, sir. We give him way more power than he really has. And one of those ways that we give him more power than he really has comes with the next bullet point, which is he is not omnipresent. Come on. God. God. Hear me. Satan can't be in more than one place at a time. God. He can't be in more than one place at a time. God. He is not Yahweh. Come on. Come on. Come on, sir. He can only be in one place at a time. All right. Yes. Now he is not limited as we are to flesh. He's not limited to flesh. Come. We're gonna get deeper into this part. So uh, with the next slide, actually, but I'm gonna just give you a little bit, little bit step forward preview. Remember that he is a messenger. Come. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. He's a created being. That's right. When the messengers was created, he was one of those messengers that was created. Yes. It's a created being. So any authority that you see that's given to the messengers, he has. Any authority you see is not given to the messengers, he does not have. Come on. That's why. So there is no need for us to make songs to the devil. <laughs> Telling him about how we want to stomp on his head. Help us, sir. Help us. Sir. We don't need it. Help us. Because if somebody is here, then you can stomp on their head. But if they're not here, what are you really doing? You can stomp, 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 stomp the devil out. You know? we, he's not physically or spiritually in more than one place at a time. That's good. So if he with you, uh -oh. It's a real problem. You <laughs> say it like that. Because what he ain't is one of us. And I will hit on that as well. We got we got we got some scriptures coming for you. I'm just kind of setting it up right now. 
So he's not omnipresent. He can't be in more than one place at a time. He can't be messing somebody's microphones up and don't want you to preach. So I'm gonna make your microphone scream. <laughs> it wasn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. Was. Come and on, Rebel. You know, you just you got the microphone too close to the speaker, and then, that's all it was. <laughs> it wasn't. Wow. I promise you. I promise. He, he did, I promise you, he did not flatten your tire this morning. Wanted you to be late to work and took the air out of your tire. I promise you. I promise you he got bigger fish to fry. I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? Wow. Trust me on this one. Wow. Okay? Trust me. Just, just trust me. He's not, he's not omnipresent. He's not omnipresent. So, you know, think about the Psalms. Uh, you don't see David speaking to his enemy. You speak, see him speaking of his That's enemy. Right. That's right. Right? And even David, some of the Psalms he's writing of a physical presence of an enemy. Like his son is trying to take his life. His king is trying to kill him. Like these are really real things. But he had a way of ignoring the problem and going straight to the problem solver. Wow. Hallelujah. So that's what we got to find ourselves doing. Don't worry about the devil. He's not omnipresent, so he's not here with you. There is no need for us to cast him out. Wow. There's no need for us to speak directly to him. Don't speak to him in first person. Because again, if you can talk to him in first person, he there. If he there, there's some real problems. Third, <laughs> He is not able to see the future. He's a messenger. Yahweh reveals future to people who he selects. He, he can't see the future if you don't want him to see the future. If he doesn't want him to know what's to come, he doesn't know what's coming. Now, he can try to influence the future. He can try to steer, create Manipulate, absolutely, and 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 remember, he was made with the heavenly host, so he's been here the whole time. Yes, sir. Guess what? He was here when this was being written. Mm -hmm. He saw Moshe on that mountain, sweating bullets. <laughs> Why he tell him all that? <laughs> I done got these people off track. He's trying to go get them back again. You know, so understand, he can't see the future. And then the last one is, guess what, y'all? He's actually not your enemy. He's Yahweh's enemy. Come on. He hates you because Yahweh loves you. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're a pawn. But Yahweh. <laughs> Is his nemesis. Come on, sir. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's right. That is who his enemy is. Yes. So if I got an enemy and I know my enemy is ruthless mm -hmm. and I know my enemy is willing to do anything, mm -hmm. one of the things they may want to do is get at my what? Family, mm -hmm. my children, those who I love, because hurting me isn't just hurting me. And can Satan hurt Yahweh? No. But if he hurts his children, if he gets to his children, he knows that's Yahweh's heart. We are his heart. So he knows that's what he needs to do. Can't get to him. Punch him in the face, it ain't gonna hurt. But let me touch his kids. Let me mess with them. Let me get let me get them off track. Let me make them not love him. Come on. All right. So let's begin to look at some scripture that can help us understand better what we're dealing with. So I wanted to choose some times where we can see that um and if I say ha satan, ha just means the adversary, the adversary. Um, again, Satan is a word um, that means adversary, and so uh, Hasatan will be the adversary. Huh. Um, so some things that we see happening when uh, Hasatan is directly involved 
will help us understand some stuff. We all know the story of Job. Job went through some stuff, right? God. We all know that. Um, and it was it was some major stuff that he went through. Major things attack, major attack. So it's important if we want to understand the enemy um, to understand it from the scripture's perspective. So this is some place that we can see the enemy is dealing with man directly, uh-huh. impacting and influencing things to impact that man. And so let's start out by reading first um, uh, six. What? Let me see. We'll just read six and seven for now. Yeah, that's what I'm we're going to read the rest, rest a little bit later. But right now, let's just start at um, first chapter of Job, verse six and seven. Verse six and seven, and it says. And the day came to be that the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahweh. And Satan also came among them. Mm -hmm. Now, if these are messengers coming, Satan's coming with those messengers, he's well within place, right? Mm -hmm. He's a messenger. Seven. And Satan said to, uh, and Yahweh, sorry. And Yahweh said to Satan, from where do you come? And Satan answered Yahweh and said, from diligently searching in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Mm. So he's walking up and down in it, searching. What's he searching for? (laughs) So let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. We'll come back around uh, to finish up Job, but let's let's go to First Peter, chapter five, and we're going to read verses eight and nine. First Peter, chapter five, verses eight and nine. <clears throat> All right, First Peter, chapter five, verse eight says, "Be sober, watch." Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, Mm -hmm. seeking someone to devour. Mm -hmm. Now we know why he said he was walking to and fro. Mm -hmm. He's seeking someone to devour. Uh Verse 9 says, what? Resist Resist him. Mm -hmm. Firm in belief, knowing that the same hardships are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Resist him. Does it say rebuke him? No. No. Doesn't say rebuke him. It says resist him. We'll come back around to that. Let's go to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Revelation 12, verse 9. And it says, and the great dragon was thrown out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who leads all the world astray. Mm. He was thrown to the earth and his messengers, his angels were thrown out with him. What does that tell us right away? He got some helping hands. So now we understand, okay, well, he's not omnipresent. But he got some helping hands. Now I'm learning something about my enemy, right? My adversary, I'm learning something about him. And so let's think of it like this. Think of it like this. Um, I guess I'll use the same example because... Uh, it works. So I'm going to ask everybody this. Who in this room has ever had a Pepsi product? Everybody? Don't judge. Is that a 100%? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Everybody in this room has had a Pepsi product. All right, y'all all got smartphones. 
Somebody tell me the, the, the name of the CEO of PepsiCo. Oh, my goodness. All these smart clothes. I'll be doing this in my class, y'all. They be on their phones anyway. So I'll be like, hey, look this up. There's you on your phone. Look at Raymond LaGuarta. Raymond LaGuarta? Yeah. Okay. Raymond LaGuarta. Raymond LaGuarta. Okay, so how many of y'all know Raymond? <laughs> Let me get this right. All of y'all done had Pepsi products and ain't never met oh Raymond. <laughs> No, Don't know Ray. Don't know Ray. Don't know Ray. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody didn't know Ray. Ray. <laughs> you see how it works? Wow. He's the CEO of Pepsi. His job every day when he wakes up is to figure out how to make you want his products. Right. But he has never not one door one one time knocked on your door and been like, hey, I got I got a nice cold sprite for you. Don't you wanna take a sip of this? Has he ever done that? Nope. No. Nope. But you have drank. Y'all drink sprite? Yeah. Drink Pepsi's? Yeah. Dr. Pepsi? I mean <laughs> Dr. Pepper one is it Dr. Pepper, Mr. Pitt? I get mixed up. Dr. Pepper. Diet Coke, Cherry Coke? I mean, well, that's, no, that's the other that's, that's, that's Atlanta. Okay, my bad. But what my point is that you see that the influence of that person is felt even though they are not physically there. Right. Why? Because Mr. Raymond has an executive board. He got a C-suite. You better believe it. And below them, they got all levels of middle management. And below them, they got all levels of distribution channels and all types of stuff. They on commercials. They on halftime shows. And if Mr. Raymond really trying to get a big deal done, he might he might knock on the door of you know let's 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 say um, uh, Commissioner Stern. Mm. You know, he's a commissioner for the NBA. He might knock on his door for real. Like, hey. Not no more. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Stern did die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about? What's, what's the, who, 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 who knows? I, I don't know his name. That's right, Adam Silas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> commissioner Stern. See, first one come in your head because he is like the commissioner. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, yeah, Adam Silas. He might knock on Adam Silas' head. Mm -hmm. He might knock on Roger. Roger Goodell. Roger Goodell's door. He might knock on, you know, I, I don't know, CEO of Walmart's door. He might knock on their door for real. Sam. Second, yeah, Sam. Ain't he did it too. Yeah. I know Sam ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, but what you see is his goal is to get people to um, <coughs> eat, you know, drink rather, drink his his product. But he doesn't have to go to your house right, because right. there are systems that are set up to impact you. God. What he needs to do is make his product available to you. Good teaching. Right. Wow. Good teaching. Yes, sir. He needs to make his product available to you. So when you go out to eat, come on. They say, we have Pepsi products. What would you like? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, you know, they get smart because, you know, it's like, well, me, again, y'all can probably tell, I don't be keeping up with, like, which is which, so I just be like, uh, they be like, we have Pepsi products, be like, uh, can I get a Mr. Peel? Uh, <laughs> I got Cherry Coke? <laughs> they be like, no, no, we do that. <laughs> So his, again, his goal is to make his product available. God. And so let's keep that in mind as we go. Keep that in mind. You never met him, never seen him, but his impact, his presence is felt because of what his agenda is. God. And the system that he has created to get to you. 
You don't have to knock on your door. Right. It comes through your phone, through your TV. It comes to your table mm -hmm. when you go out to eat. So let's take a look now at what his objective is. What his objective is. Let's start with Matthew 4. Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to read uh, 1 through 9. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. And it reads, Then Yeshua was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tried by the devil. And after having fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the trier came and said to him, If you are the son of Elohim, first of all, if, okay, if you are the son of Elohim, command that these stones become bread. But he answering said, it has been written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Elohim. Verse five, then the devil took him uh, up into the set apart city, set him on the edge of the set apart place and said to him, if you, man, if you don't stop this, if word. <laughs> If you are the son of Elohim, throw yourself down, for it has been written. Since you want to start throwing quotes, y'all think the devil, the devil know the word? Absolutely. He was there when it was written. I told y'all. He was there when it was written. He know it. He lived through it. He done seen it. And it says, he shall command his messengers concerning you. That's Psalms 9111. I know the word. You can go to word, I can go to word too. And it says, and in their hands they shall bear you up so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. Yeah. I don't give it a try. <laughs> Same sort of approach that he tried to take with uh, Hava, right? With Eve. Mm -hmm. And in verse 7 says, Yeshua said to him, it has also been written, you shall not try who? Sure. Ha! He quoted Deuteronomy 6.16 to him. Now he did a couple things there, y'all. He told them who he was. He didn't say, he didn't say, well, you know, you shouldn't try him. He said, don't try me. Don't try me. Because the scripture says, you shall not try your hey, mom, hey, your Elohim. Don't try me. Who's speaking here? We it, this is this is Satan and who? Messiah, right? Yeah. So Messiah just declared himself as Yahweh, your Elohim, mm -hmm. right there to Satan. Hallelujah. Verse 8. We're going down to 9. Verse 8 says, Again the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the reins of the world and their esteem and said to him, All these I shall give you. If you fall down and worship me, whoa, fall down and worship me? I think we just struck a chord. Mm. That's his objective. If you get time, look up the book of Adam and Eve. Um, it's available, you know, free downloads. You can download it, read through it. Um, you know, certain. Uh, Things you can also put on your phone as apps. Um, you can go to YouTube, look it up, and just listen to it. It's great. Uh, but it's, it's something in there in the book of Adam and Eve that reveals uh, some of the backdrop of what's happening and where the enemy has developed this real disdain mm. for man. And where it came in is when Yahweh created man, he took him. And he presented them to the heavenly host and says, behold my image, worship my image. Mm -hmm. And Satan said, hmm. me worship him? He's but mortal. He's a human. I am great. <laughs> you have made me above. You have made me wonderful. You want me to worship him? Satan's entire goal 
from then forward was to place his throne above the most highs. Because if he places his throne above the most highs, then you're worshiping him, you're worshiping him, everybody's worshiping him. Yeah. He wants us to bow to him. Mm -hmm. He wants to receive that worship. He wants the most high to worship him. So that's why he is entertaining his best shot yeah. at Yahweh in the flesh. And what does he ask him to do? In all of these examples, I'm asking you to bring yourself low. What does he say? What, what's the first thing he asked him to do? This is just hitting y'all. The first thing he asked him to do is pick up some stones. What you got to do today? <coughs> Bow. Bow. Mm -hmm. Then what's the next thing he told him to do? Oh, throw yourself down. Right. Off right. This. Oh. And then the next thing he told him, he's just like, let's stop beating around the bush. Let's stop beating around the bush, man. I'll give you all of this if you worship me. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was his ultimate goal. Was to get the most high who he just was told, you are the most high, because he says, the scripture says that you don't try me. Right. Yahweh, your Elohim. And he says, I'm going to try one more time. Worship me. That was his goal. So his objective is to receive worship. Yeah. To receive worship. So let's take a look at his level of authority. Let's look at his level of authority. We're going to go back to Job. And we're going to finish out uh, this, this, this conversation to a point. We're not going to go through the whole thing. But we're going, to, we're going to go from 8 to 12 in Job. And it says, chapter 1, by the way, chapter 1, verse 8. And Yahweh said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth? A perfect and straight man. One who fears Elohim and turns aside from evil. And Satan answered Yahweh and said, Is Job fearing Elohim for naught? Have you not made a hedge around him and around his household and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions has increased in the land. But stretch out your hand Please, and strike all that he has, if he would not curse you to your face. And Yahweh said to Satan, see, all that he has in his, uh, all that he has is in your hands. Only do not lay a hand on himself. And Satan went out from the presence of Yahweh. Let's stop, let's pause for a quick second and make some notations. Let's recognize something. Now remember when we started, what was Satan doing? Walking to and fro, right? Right? And we, we know that the goal was to see who he might devour, right? Okay, so now, did he find somebody? Who did he find? He found Job. How do you know? Who said it? The most high. What did Yahweh ask him? Have you considered? Have you? Have you considered? What was Satan's answer? Man, I done tried everything to get that dude. Man, I went to the I went to the back door, I went to the side door, I went to the kitchen window, I went to everything was locked down. How you know? He done tried. How you know all my door is locked? You know I'm in jiggling my handles. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> all he did was that. So the question now is, was Yahweh, because this is something else that we sometimes misunderstood. Was Yahweh suggesting to Satan that he go and try Job? Yes. Because he asked him. He said, have you considered my servant? Was this like where Yahweh was like, hmm, I got a test of Job. Hey, say, come here. Have you tried Job? Is that what happened? Satan presented himself along with the other messengers. 
And you always said, what you been up to? Oh, you could, have you considered my servant help? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did, huh? I know. This was a rhetorical question, y'all. We teach that, you know, have you tried my sermon? My sermon is going to make through this test, so go right ahead. No, that's not what happened. Satan knocked on all the doors, tried to get in, tried to talk to the to the to the neighbors around, and tried to sneak his way. He could not get in, and so when he came, Yahweh said, "Have you tried my servant Job?" Immediately, he came with all the intel of everything he tried. How does he know that he has a hedge around all that he owns? How does he know that he has a hedge around his children? How does he know? Because he didn't try. He has tried. And so what he then asked of Yahweh was different from what we generally understand. Him. He was not, Yahweh did not suggest Yahweh. Satan was already at it. All right? So that's important to understand as well because that one tells us that Satan can't go any further than he's allowed. That's true. Thank you, Father. He can't go any further than he's allowed. So his level of authority mm -hmm. is only that what has been given to Amen. him. Now, if it's been given to him, it's different. it is different. Because when Yahweh removed that hedge, he, he still put a layer in place. He said, now don't touch him. Don't, don't touch him. But you can touch everything around him. You can touch everything around. Let's look at Mark 5. Talking about the level of authority. Look at Mark 5. Chapter 5, verse 6 through 9. All right, chapter 5, verse 6 through 9. And it reads, And seeing Yeshua from a distance, he ran and bowed down to him, and having called out with a loud voice, said, What have I done? Uh, what, have, what have I to do with you, Yeshua, son of the Most High El? Swear to Elohim not to torture me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, because we are many. My name is Legion. Because, did he say my name is Satan? No. Hmm. He says, my name is Legion. We read earlier. We read earlier. Who was sent with Satan? Messengers. That he took messengers with him. There were those who said, I am on your side. Mm -hmm. And I want to help you fulfill your mission. And those messengers, those Five. demons, Five. those legion, that's who we need to be on the lookout for. Again, remember, remember, we never met Raymond. Are we drinking Coca-Cola? Pepsi. See? Pepsi. We're drinking Pepsi. I should have just used Coca-Cola. But see, Pepsi is North Carolina company. That's the only reason I get Pepsi. Um, but there was an important, important thing to understand when he responded that way. Satan, just as PepsiCo sets up a web to entrap as many people as they possibly can. Remember again, what was the goal? What's Raymond's goal? To make his product available to you. Satan's goal is to make his product available to you. He wants to put it in front of your face. But we 
have been addressing all of the problems to Satan. So we give him credit for all kinds of stuff that he ain't do, that he ain't here. And so what does that do? Why is that important? It's because we are then fighting the wrong fight. God. We're fighting the wrong fight. We're playing football, but we didn't realize that it was football. <laughs> what? We didn't realize that it's not American football. Uh, it's everybody else football, yeah. which is soccer. <laughs> so we're prepared for the wrong fight. God. So what does being prepared for the wrong fight mean? We're not prepared. It means that we're not prepared. Um, so let's go to 2 Thessalonians real quick. I'm going to start wrapping this up. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. And it says, verse 1 through 12 is what we're going to read. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, sorry. Chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. And it reads, as to the coming of our Master Yeshua Messiah and our gathering together to, to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if, as if from us, as if the day of Yahweh has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, because the falling away is, is to come first. And the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as Elohim in the dwelling place of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. Y'all remember his objective? is to set himself above. Verse 5 says, Do you not remember that I told you this while I was still with you? And now you know what restrains for him to be revealed in his time. For the secret of lawlessness is already at work. Only until he who now restrains comes out of the midst. And then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and bring to naught with the manifestation of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and wonders and falsehood and with all deceit and unrighteousness in those perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved. And for this reason, Elohim sends them working of delusion for them to believe the falsehood in order that all should be judged who did not believe the truth, but have delighted in unrighteousness. So we see this objective and we see his marketing plan his marketing plan is not to send our microphone screen or to flatten our tires or to make us late for work or to make you spill something on your shirt his marketing scheme is lawlessness yeah. and it says the secret of lawlessness in verse 7 He's not telling everybody, be lawless, be lawless, be lawless. What are they doing? He set up a system that says, this is how you serve God. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Ah, you don't got to do that. You're no longer under the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and because you're not under the law, if you even do that thing, then you're saying that the blood of the Messiah is not for you. So, you don't need that. So now this lawlessness, we're missing it. We're missing the lawlessness 
because we're too busy looking for flattened tires. Mm. Well. And meanwhile, he's telling us well. and teaching us and making available to us what? Lawlessness. Wow. That's what we got to be looking out for. And so now when we get into that, we then say, okay, if the goal is lawlessness, Come on. now there's something else involved. He's just presenting it to us. When the waitress comes, I'm going to tell you what I say. But when the waitress comes to your table and say, you know, what would you like to drink? And if you, you know, we have Pepsi products and you let her know which Pepsi product. Y'all know what my answer is every time? Water with lemon, please. It's the freest drink on your menu. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I say that to say the option can be presented, but it doesn't mean you have to take it. Come, right. That's good. That's you good have stuff. something to do with it. Right. You can refuse it, but if you don't even know that's what you're looking for, that's good stuff. If you don't even know that's what you're looking for, did you rebuke? No. When I said water, I didn't say, you got the nerve coming to my table asking me if I'm going to a drink. Get out of here. No. I resisted. I resist it. I think it's, I'm not sure if I even have it in here, but uh, Zechariah 3. Zechariah 3. Um, somebody get that for me. Zechariah 3. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, you can go to, oh, how did I get over there? Go to go to two verse two. Verse two. Yah said to Satan, Yah rebuke thee, O Satan. Even Yah that have chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. It is not the uh, this a brand a brand a brand plucked out of the fire. Now Joshua is clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that That's stood good. before him. That's good. So did y'all catch that? Who rebuked Satan? Moses. There's another occasion. I don't have this in here either. I don't know why I didn't put this in here. I think because it's in what part two or part three. But there's but this is important. Um, it was Michael who was going somewhere, and it says he says I got held up. That's right. I got held up because of Satan. That's right. Even Michael. Right. Did not rebuke Satan. Right, right. Michael said, Yahweh rebuke you, Satan. Yeah, he sure did. So the words, I rebuke you, Satan, needs to come all the way out of all of our prayers. Come. Wow. That's right. That's right. We don't have the authority right. to rebuke Satan. That's good stuff, man. That's right. That's right. We don't have what is required to rebuke Satan. That's good. Go to Revelation, figure that out. What does it take to get rid of Satan? <laughs> we don't have that. We resist. No, thank you. Because now we understand that he is building systems. So when his imps and demons come and present it to us, we resist. That's good. That's good, bro. Yeah. You built that. Yes, sir. We push away. Yes. Why? Because guess what? There are times that the war is really within. Mm -hmm. How do we avoid W O S D? Y'all know what that is? W O S D. Y'all know what that is? No, I'm kidding. Y'all ain't gonna know what it is because oh. I made it up. <laughs> but <it's, laughs> it stands for weapons of self destruction. Wow. Instead of weapons of mass destruction, y'all remember when that was all the big thing? Weapons of mass destruction. What are we looking for? Weapons of mass. 
W-O-S-D. How do we avoid being weapons of self-destruction? That's good. That's good. Part of it is getting out of Yah's way by what? Staying in Yah's way. We get out of his way, stop rebuking Satan and try to do all that. Just stay in his way. He got you. Go. Guess what? Don't come out of the place of protection. The hedge is there. Did Job ever come out of that place? He never came out. It got to the point where Satan was like, I can't get to him. Right. And that place that we stay is simply in the ways of Yah. Because the lawlessness is what's going to, those systems that are set up to tell us that everything's okay, we walk ourselves right into his establishment. So in this case, we're looking for sin. We're seeking out for sin. We're praying for sin, begging for sin. We're desiring it because we don't realize that it's sin. So I'm not saying that we're doing this on purpose. I'm not. But what I'm saying is, Satan is a deceiver. Yes, Yes, he is. So just like Raymond got all of this fancy stuff going on to get us exposed to Pepsi that we don't even under y'all don't listen I work in a college well partially um, I work partially in a college setting and so I teach a couple finance classes at a and and um, you would be amazed I'm starting to see more of it I, I've, under, I've been in the business world for, for almost 20 years but now seeing it from the this position it's different. It's totally different. I'm getting calls from people like, oh yeah, we want to come see you, we want to come talk to your students, we want to da, da, da. I'm getting escorted around, you know, headquarters of buildings and all this kind of stuff. I'm getting pursued by deans of USC. The dean of USC accounting school is like seeking me out, like looking for me. Where's, where's the guy from AT? Where's the guy from AT? Oh, can you come in the hallway? I gotta talk to you for a second. I'm saying all that to say there are things that are taking place to create because then I'm sitting with these corporate heads and they're like, well, what we're trying to do is impact diversity and inclusion. And we've been told that um, we need to do better. I'm like, oh, you don't have enough black people. So you come to the A&T, the black university. Now I figured out why you're trying to find me and hunt me down and all of this kind of stuff. I say all of that to say there's always a plan. And so, and and in that case, it's a good thing that that, that we're trying to do better, right? It's a good thing. And so I get to go to some of my students and be like, yo, the other day I I went to one of my students. I said, meet me out, meet me out of class. I sat and called an exec for a company with him on the phone. I say, I'm, I'm connecting you guys. I think you, I think he's the kind of guy you're looking for. I think you might want to at least let them be one of your options. And you know, so now this conversation can be had and then we look up and it's like, oh man, we got black executives, we got this, we got that. How is that stuff happening? It's not just being, it's, it doesn't just happen by itself. No. There is a system in place. Uh-huh. So now they're going to the university saying, oh, we're gonna start grooming now. We'll start pulling you in now. And then we have a bigger pool to pull from. Which, in other words, we're trying to get all these black people off our backs because y'all talking too much trash. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the point is we have to be aware of what these systems are. We have to be aware of what these systems are. And it's not always that just being moral and ethical is enough. Because lawlessness can look like the utmost yes, right. in ethics and morals. That's true. It can be lawless is all get out, which simply means it goes against the Torah. That's right, absolutely. It's against the Torah. You can make the fine dining establishments. Do y'all understand like the finest dining people think of when they think of fine dining, it's all shellfish. <laughs> and they will have it beautiful. And you look at the little, I like watching the cooking shows and stuff. And they done, they get the little napkin clean the plate. And it's all like pretty and 
you know, like standing up and da 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 da. And they're like, oh, this plate is exquisite. This is enough. This is a hundred and ten dollar dish in my restaurant. Blah 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 blah. But it's unclean. God, God. It's lawless. No matter how good it looks, no matter how good it tastes to you, God, God. it's lawless. These are systems. So when these systems are set up, we have to recognize it. We do. Be ready for it. Be prepared for it. But sometimes understanding that it's not just blame it on Satan makes us deal with ourselves. And sometimes that means we have to answer this question. Are we brave enough to face our own shortcomings? Wow. So now that it's not the devil, because y'all, the, the devil really was on Job's track. He was, what's the rest yeah, of the song? Right. He on my track, yeah, trying to hold me back. Whatever the rest of the words to the song is. <laughs> he was really on Job's track. Mm -hmm. Job is, what, like 42 chapters or something like that long? Something like that. Go through the whole thing. Something. Never, not one time mm -hmm. will you ever see Job. Job is racking his brain, trying to figure out what's wrong. Yep. Uh, Satan what? really is on his track. And not one time did he ever say, That's right. Satan on my track. That's right. He addressed what? The Most High and himself. He said, I got to be doing something wrong. There's got to be something wrong. What is it? I got to find it. What's going on? Not one time did he blame the devil. That's so good. let's pay attention to that kind of stuff. Good, good So that brings up next piece is dealing with the old stuff just living in the past. That's a lie. Sometimes we gotta bring up the old stuff to deal with it. Because mm -hmm. it's been sitting there. Gone. What happens when you bury a seed? Well, it grows. That's why. And sometimes we call ourselves I'm just not deal. I'm not gonna look that way. I'm just uh, forget about it. Man, all we do is bury it. Now, the systems that have been created are watering it and giving it all the light and nourishment that it needs. And then one day, it sprouts up. And when it does, oh, buddy, it's like crabgrass. Then the next thing you know, you just let it grow to a certain height, cut it, and hope it looked like the rest of your grass. That's it. <laughs> right. But that's not what the Most High wants. He wants us to deal with. It. Yeah. So if we if we if we stop looking always for Satan to be the problem, then we can start looking at ourselves. How am I interacting with the system that is created? How has this captured my mind? How has this gotten me in a place? where I don't recognize lawlessness. That's good. And the only way we're going to recognize lawlessness is we got to go to the Torah. We do. We got to go to this word. We got to read it. We got to take all of the traditions, chuck it, and start over. Because lawlessness is how he wants to get us to the point of worship. Come. That's how he wants to do it. And so I'm going I'm to go ahead and bring this to a close. Um, I'm going to just kind of talk through this. Thing. If you look at Romans 7, Shaul really lets us know how he sees. And, and because I, I don't, I try to be careful in using commentary. We use it as history. That's what we want to do. Use it as history because that's what it is. And so I'm not going to say that all of Shaul's words are words of the Most High because plenty of times that he's just giving his opinion on something. But having the thoughts of a man who is well studied in the Torah is important. And so this is, this is uh, Shaul letting us know what he sees as the Torah's role in the battle for our mind. And what he's talking about is when I want to do good, there's this law. When I'm wanting it. This law is a battle with this other law. Is that Yahweh's law? Mm -mm. No. 
the law of my flesh is that battle with the law of my mind, my spirit. And so there's this struggle inside of me. There are these two laws that are struggling. One that wants to do right and the other that wants to appease itself. We already know if it feels good, looks good, smells good, tastes good, it probably ain't good because that's just how it works. <laughs> that's kind of how it works. <laughs> So don't be fooled by the senses. Be alerted by them. God. And understand that, that Torah is what we need. That, and it's not always going to look like what the world wants it to. And they're going to look at you and say, oh, you, you, just, you just mean, or you just, uh, you, you, you're too religious. Or, Why do you say that? That's just not nice. Wait a minute. That's scripture. Right. Might not be nice, but it's scripture. It's God. Right. We got to stay away from that lawlessness. Mm -hmm. And so in closing, um, the question then becomes which of those laws are leading us? Which one are we feeding into? Which one are we feeding into? Because in Genesis, we see where the problem began. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve were exposed to both good uh -huh. and evil. Mm -hmm. Good and the knowledge of good and evil, which means and that word the, the, yeah, I think that's what yeah. The I is the word for, for knowledge. And and it's uh the first letter's door. Dalit is door. Mm -hmm. Um the next letter I in is I to see. And then the last letter is a, a tab is a sign or a, a mark, like X marks the spot. So it's like you open the door and see the sign or see the, the goal. Now, the problem is, it's both good and evil. How do we distinguish? We can't. We can't use our flesh to figure it out. We can't. We have to rely on the Most High. We have to rely on the Spirit. We have to rely on this Torah. Because if we go according to our feelings, Come on. every time the waitress comes before us with that coat, we're going to take it. <laughs> we won't resist. And that's what we got to get good at doing. Resisting. Stop the rebuking. Let's resist. Recognize. Know those systems are set up to entrap you. But as long as I stay in this place, in the presence of the Most High. If Satan can get to me, it's only because y'all allowed it. And if he allowed it, I know he still got me. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, any, any questions, rabbits? In, in Lori and anybody if there's something you want me to go back to if there's something you want to bring out further if there's a comment a question anything please feel free something else you want to share to add into the discussion a rebuttal on any of it we're open hallelujah hallelujah praise father God for that teaching uh, James, I just want to bring out a scripture. James 4 and 7. James 4 and 7, it says, subject yourself to Elohim. Resist the devil and he will flee. Yeah. You know, and, and that's been one thing that has been major in, as we have come into the Torah, that we realized that it was... Um, ridiculous for us to, you know, when people would say, um, uh, devil, you know, I talked to the devil this morning. I'm like, why are you talking to the devil? I mean, so, I mean, we, we have gotten so caught up on um, things that are just not true. They're not trustworthy. And we've listened to people who are not 
um, studied enough in the word and don't have understanding of what the scripture is telling us and that we have so many great examples. That was such a great teaching because um, when you taught on this before, now I also always tell people, you know, my son did a teaching on, uh, you know, that public enemy number one and uh, really brought out the understanding that yo, Job never said anything. He, he never said anything concerning what the devil was doing or why is this happening, the devil is God. But he always went to who his father was. He always went to who he reported to. He always went to who he served and worshiped. And that that is, should be the example for all of us walking in the Torah. Because the, the bottom line to that word that you use there, da'at, that that's the, also um, the word that is used for wisdom. And that Yahweh says the Torah is our what? Is our wisdom. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if we are walking in the truth of the wisdom and the light of Elohim, he will bring all things into reckoning. Whatever needs to be happen needs to happen during this journey. We can we can uh, believe that Father God has meant for it to be for our good because that's what He said. He said, "I know the plan that I have for you, and it's a plan of good, a plan of peace. It's not a plan of evil, but it's a plan that you will have an expected." In. So we should expect, no matter what's going on in my life right now, Father God, I know I have an expected end. And that end is the goal to you that I'm going to reign and I'm going to live with you forever. Hallelujah. Hello? All right. Um, wonderful teaching. I love every time you do this. Uh, it always sheds more light for me each and every time. And thank you for doing this one today. Because this whole week, I was just thinking about um, recognizing patterns. And uh, speaking, you speaking about cost of time, setting up systems when you begin to recognize the pattern, that's when you're able to make the choice to say, this is not what I wanna do, so I'm going to follow this way. Um, and going back to Adam and Hava, and them having that, uh, the, that, that knowledge or that wisdom that they didn't know what to do with it, yeah. I recognize fully that that is still where we are because it seems to me um, that everything is both good and evil. It's dependent upon the context. You can be in a desert and thirsty and water is great. Con. Or you can be dropped just by yourself in the middle of the ocean and there is death. So just recognizing where everything should fit in what box should I put this decision in is uh, I guess the thing that has helped me the most so all that to say thank you for th doing this teaching this week um, great message great teaching on Looking at the lawlessness. Here, um, I wanted to refer back to Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, where Yeshua is quoting, um, Man shall not live by bread alone. And so, if he is the bread of life, and then there are those who say, All I need is Jesus, that's it. You know, just. His words, you know, everything in the red. That's it. That's all I'm going to read. That's all I'm going to go by. Wow. But he himself said, man shall not live by bread alone. So what is he actually saying? Man shall not live by Jesus alone. But every word that comes from the mouth of, of 
Yahweh. And so that goes back to um, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. He's quoting that very word. And, and I'll go ahead and read it so that we can understand that these words are not arbitrary. So Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3 says, And he humbled you to let you suffer hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, to make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of Yahweh. So right there, he's, he's telling us it, it was already written that man shall not live by Jesus alone. Okay. Every word, which is the Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awesome, awesome teaching. Now, awesome teaching. This is, this is bugged out how he's talking about, you know, Concerning, you know, we all raised, raised oh, rebuke the vow, rebuke the vow, you know, uh, us ourselves. But um, I remember just a while ago when um, I think you touched on the way you told me where, where I think it was Michael, I can't remember which one it was. And he's arguing over the body of Moses and he said, uh, he, he, and, and, and I was talking, going back and forth, and he said, he said, Yah, rebuke me. You know what I'm saying? So that's just confirmation. I told him, I told him that, that, uh, that on that study a while ago. And uh, what came to my mind as well is, is, is in John 15 about, about being connected to that bond. Yeah. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Yeah, it says, I am the true bond. And my father's a husband. This is this the first, this the first verse of John chapter nine of the Gospels. Every branch, is, if any branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he he purges it out, and it must bring forth more fruit. Um, basically, you know, I mean that that word and be connected to that bond and be connected to that walk is how you, you know you discern and you, you discern as well how to go about dealing with different, different things that come your way that the Most High allows to come your way. But then ultimately, just like Joe, when he went through, it was to build character and take it to another level, the most high. You know what I mean? That's what people fail to, uh, fail to realize. He said, oh, he went through all that stuff to go through it. Nah, the most high allowed that to build his character. And, and like I said, you, like, like I said, I forget exactly where it says the word, where it says, you know, father chasing, chasing, just this child, whatever, it's pleasant. But the most high is for you, it's for your better, for your life. So. Yeah, that's, that's all I want to say, man. O awesome, awesome, uh, awesome work. Yes. All praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Um, so I, I agree. Awesome teaching. Awesome teaching. Um, I want to first say thank you for reiterating that no matter how long you're in this walk, we're ever learning. Like, and we don't ever strive to stop learning. God. We don't ever... We don't reach the finish line until it's finished. That's right? right. So we just keep running and keep striving. And it gives you that hunger to keep searching. Uh -huh. um, I want to get some clarity before I make this comment. Worship, the posture of worship is to get low, right? right. To get low. And so, as Lori said, having heard this teaching before, just a whole nother perspective. Uh -huh. And today I just thought about how, you know, we can experience some things in life that make us feel mighty low, <laughs> mighty low. But you said so well today to not get lost in being low. Like even if we don't blame Hase Khan, right? You, you, you're real low and you're not saying, man, the devil did this, but your countenance is so low that if you don't choose to seek the problem solver Hallelujah. in that state of lowliness, where are you? You know, and it's you're going to serve one or the other. God. And so I'm so appreciative because it's okay to be in that state. Like that's what that did for me today. Sometimes when we find ourselves in situations that bring us low and you don't understand why, it's okay. But still, when you're in that state of lowliness, yeah. seek the problem solver. Worship him. 
and he will exalt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. So, told I God. Told I God. Just the, the word that came forth yesterday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to say that, you know, um, you said some stuff today that was so mind blowing. Like, I'm sitting here in shock. Like, wow. <laughs> um, so, I want to give all praise and esteem and glory to the Most High Yah for using yeah. you to teach today uh, what you taught. I mean, we had some people come through and teach and everything, but. I don't recall, and somebody can help me with this, I don't recall anybody teaching anything about this um, to this level. So I just truly, truly, as I was watching you teach, I was just kept saying, y'all, thank you for this vessel that has humbled himself enough to teach this word without thinking whether or not is anybody going to believe what I'm saying or is anybody going to Accept what I'm saying, but you just taught yes. under the power and the anointing of the Most High Y'all. So I appreciate yes. you today, yes. for real. Yes. I mean, I love you, brother, but there's a new love I have for you now for the way you have allowed y'all to teach you, allow y'all to teach you so you can teach us today. So Hallelujah. thank you for your humbleness and for your, yeah. you know, um, your time in teaching. So to the level where there were some people that may have been sitting in here that I was feeling that was like, wait a minute, what? what? Mm -hmm. But you taught it so that a, my granddaughter back there probably knew exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> That's how well you taught this word. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate y'all. Yeah. Yeah. God is Yahuwah is a Yahuwah of simplicity. Yeah. Yes. And you exemplify that today. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. 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 You touched on some uh, this subjects today that on the way here, yeah. that we were already talking about Job and you know, yeah. just all the things, the little yeah. points that you touched on, it was like confirmation yeah. to us. It was exactly what we needed. Yeah. So praise we God. just praise y'all for you. And it was just a beautiful word, a wonderful yeah. word that really just, we, just, we could take it all in, you know, and it was just wonderful. Thank you so much, praise y'all. Uh, this time I have a question. Um, Deuteronomy 28, and it's starting at 15. So basically, the curses. Yeah. So just to read the, the 15th verse, it says, And it shall be, if you do not obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, to guard to do all his commands and his laws, which I command you today, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Okay, so my question is, when do we know the difference between the systems that Hasatan might have set up versus Yahweh's word being fulfilled? No difference in a lot of cases. Yahweh used, let's say for example, um, go back to when he told them all your dead car carcasses will be left in the wilderness. There was all manner of things that took them out. You have the, the earth opened up because y'all was hard headed and said, hey, Moshe, you ain't that important. We important too. You have serpents that came in, bit people up, killed them. You have your brethren who had to turn their sword toward you. If you participated in the building up, so it was it was several things. And when Yahweh allowed it, even we look at Job as that example, that he had to limit Hasatan to not touch Job. He couldn't take Job's life. But he allowed all of that other stuff. To take place 
So I think what it comes back to is, yes, you will find yourself, um, you know, there, well, I think we read it, we did. Let's go back to, uh, let's see. It was in Second Thessalonians. And I think it was 12. Um, no, 11. Verse 11. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 says, And for this reason Elohim sends them a working of delusion for them to believe the falsehood. What falsehood is, is he talking about? This is the falsehood that's in verse 9. That's coming from Satan. Verse 9 says, To the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and wonders and falsehood. So it's Satan who's presenting, creating environments which lawlessness can flourish but it's Yahweh who's allowing that to happen according to verse 11 because he then comes and says oh yeah by the way the working of delusion is sent by the most high so he let them you want to fall off the bridge I will I will build a sign that says Right this way. And so I think that Deuteronomy 28, the way it starts, just like the way we get to 15, is, is with your choice if you diligently obey. If you do not obey. So if you do not obey, you're not going to be able to figure out all the ways that that are set up to catch you. Did that, did that answer your question? Just also the point. Just also to point to what you just said as well. Um, we're never going to know every way that is planned for us to fall because a lot of times it's emotional and we can make a decision in the split second out of emotions but what should lead us is Torah and that's the only defense we have against it by knowing what is right and wrong according to Torah that's our only defense now, should we break what is um, in the Torah? You shall not. You shall not eat pork. Okay, I didn't know that. So when you broke it, you didn't know. You're covered because of the blood. But now, when you break what you know, you shall not commit adultery. Well, I know if I do it. I can get forgiveness because it's all about forgiveness. So now you're in iniquity, and he says your blood is, right. a, you know, it's upon you. That's right. So the only way we can know how to defend ourselves from all of the traps is to follow Torah. Either you're going to know, or you're not going to know. And that's why he says this: this law shall not depart from the lips. Um, that's also why he says this law, um, the nations will see you and they will see this is your that's wisdom. Who is this wise nation who has their Elohim so close and all this law? Why did he say that? Because people will see and recognize. People say it all the time about all of y'all. You know what they say about you? There's something different, but I don't know what it is. Sometimes they say it nice. Sometimes they say, hey, cool. 
<laughs> but it means the same thing. <laughs> In other words, they don't understand, but they recognize there's something different about you in particular. You ain't just the regular Christian. Something different about you. And so that Torah, that Torah helps us. We don't even know what it prepares us for. We don't even know what it keeps us away from. We have no clue. Nor do we even, should we, again, Satan is not our enemy, right? He's Yahweh's. So he's just trying to get to us. We don't know, y'all. We just don't know. We don't know what happens as a result of keeping the feast. We don't know what happens as a result of walking the door. We have no clue what it really is doing for us. Um, great teaching. Um, and just looking at you, a few different points here. One, um, with the title of this, Public Enemy Number One, most times we are our own enemy. We are the number one enemy that we have. A silence from our satan. Because a lot of times it's not him, it's just us and the battles that we face within ourselves. It's our own, uh, some, like you say, sometimes we're in our own way. Mm -hmm. um, and there are things that we have, that has become uh, like second nature. And we just, we do them repetitively to where most times we don't really realize it, but um, it's, it's just part of our nature. Um, and one of the, another thing is when you brought up uh, how the Apostle time tested Job, and you said that we have to, that is, he never once did Job say, oh, the devil is doing this, or Yahweh, why did you do this to me? None of that. It wasn't pointing blame at an outside person or an outside entity. It was him taking ownership because maybe it was something that I had done. Um, so it's a self inventory that we have to do daily. Um, and when you said we, we have to resist hostile talk, we have to resist these things that come against us. Um, that's why the Father says, your word have I hidden. The word says, your word have I hidden in my heart so that I do not sin against you. So that is one um, one weapon that helps us in each and every day fight. But also the word says that sin is crouching at our door. It is our job to master it. Right. So even while resisting, we also have to master what we're resisting. Uh. And it's not in a sense to master to where, oh, I can do this, I'm good. No, it's master to where every time you come around it, it's like, eh, whatever. It's there, so I don't care. It has no effect on you anymore. That is becoming a master over whatever it is that has um, come against you or those things that we put against ourselves. Um, and those seeds in which we plant, like you said, um, it was not in this teaching, but it was a while ago. The only way these things can grow is if you water it. The only way these things can take root is if you yourself feed it. If you don't feed it, it starves. You don't give it the light. It doesn't grow. You don't water it. It doesn't get the nutrients. If that soil is just done, then there's nothing going to come of that seed. But the more you put into that seed, the more it grows. Now you have a huge harvest from something that you really don't need in your life. So that's why we have to be careful of the seeds in which we plant. So, great teaching. Hallelujah. Um, I was just um, sitting here thinking about when you said we're talking about <clears throat> how we're different. And Father Yah has called us to be a set apart people. Huh. Being set apart means that you are different. There is something different about you than other people of the world. And we have to realize that the Elohim that we serve is an Elohim of distinction. He makes a distinction. He makes a distinction between the seventh day of the week and the other days of the week. He makes a distinction between light and dark. He makes a distinction between Israel 
and the nations. He makes a distinction between his own two, only two kind of people in the world, his and not his. So you have to make a decision on whether you want to be his. Um, and then we get to walk in his laws, his commandments, judgments, right rulings, and statutes. So I think about often when we, you know, Israel has never um, completely gotten over that place of we want to be like the nations. Give us a king. We want to look like the nations. We want to have everything that, oh, Father, look what they have. We want to have that too. Um, we continue to do that when, like uh, Kepa, Peter says, we are a peculiar people. Come. Peculiar means you do not look like everybody else. Come. And we don't understand that we were born to not look like everybody else. Come. So if we as Israel can get to that place where we are okay in our own skin and our own halakha, the way that we walk and talk and how we keep the Torah and the truth and the instructions of the Most High, we are always going to have that issue because we're always trying to look like the Joneses. God. That's what's wrong with our people, with the black people in this United States. We want to look like our counterpart. When we have been called to be peculiar, God. we have been called. And then even to broaden that out, because Israel is all, because I don't want it to sound like um, um, just all Israel is, is black, is dark skin, because all Israel is all different colors, nations of people. That's why I love all the banners and the flags that you have, because Israel, that's the promise to Father Abraham that all of the nations of the earth will be blessed because of Abraham. So that means we got brothers that are every color, every nationality. But one thing we will have in common is that we're peculiar. Brothers, yeah. Any, anybody have anything else? All right. So no more praying to the devil. No, can't pray to the devil. Don't do that. No more first person conversations with the devil. No more. No more. The kids can't sing. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil. Can't sing that song. Can't do that song. And, and remember, if you say you, then you can't say you can't have my freedom. You can't have my family. You can't have my. Well, I don't even know the rest of the words. You can't have my. You can't have my. Y'all know that song. Uh huh. That's a war song. Give me back my stuff. Uh huh. I stole my stuff. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, we just have to have to know know who we serve. Know who we serve. We, we don't we don't have to, we don't have to talk to. Them. And you know what? I, I didn't point this out, but I forgot I forgot to point this out. But think about the people who Satan entertained. Adam. Yeah. Yeah. And Hopper. Yeah. They won. Yeah. Joel. The first. Yeshua. Oh, God. Paul. These are the people who dealt directly <laughs> with the devil. He wasn't dealing with everybody one on one. So understand that. That's why I say, if you don't cause a bunch of ruckus, <laughs> then he like, oh, I need to go see one of my number one fans over here. Who am I talking to? If you don't do so. You know, you know, did something either. Either you got to be done did something so horrible, or you got to be done did something so great to make him want to come talk to you one on one. Other than that, he ain't here. Y'all be offense. He ain't here. We, we don't even. We don't. We don't, we don't. we don't have to tell him to leave. He ain't here. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. That's all I got. Hallelujah. Hey. 
Let us go before the Father and Lord pray. Father, we thank you now. We just give you glory and honor, Father. Thank you for um, this opportunity, Father. Uh, just come together, Father, as family, Father, to dive into your word, Father. Pray that you would just continue to teach us, Father. Continue to grow us. Continue to um, take us from glory to glory, yes. faith to faith, Father. Continue to make us even more set apart, Father. Continue to build us up, Father. We know that everything in this world is created um, to capture us and to get us away from you. And we know that the goal of the, of the adversary, Father, is for us to worship him and not you, Father. Yes. So we just ask that you would make it plain, Father. Mm -hmm. When there are traps that are set up, Father, when there are systems that are designed, Father, we ask when that marketing material comes our way, Father, mm. that you would just oh, sound yeah. the alarm. Yes, Lord, please. Give us the strength to resist, Father. Give us the wisdom to resist. Give us the mindset, Father. Mm -hmm. Hide your Torah in our heart, Father, oh, so that we yes. do not sin against you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you have given us um, your Torah, when you have given us the instruction manual, have given us uh, the cheat code, you've given us the answers you, to the test. Mm -hmm. We just pray, Father, that you would just make us wise in your word, wise in your ways. Yeah. Not, not wise to do evil, but wise to do good. Teach yeah. us to do good, Father. Yeah. Creating us a new and clean heart, Father. Yeah. We thank you, we love you, we appreciate you, Father. Just pray, Father, that as we close out, Father, that you would just be with us. Uh, protect us, keep us, Father. Uh, present us back together, Father, uh, as we go um, throughout the week, Father. Protect us and keep us. Uh, we know that you are our keeper, our provider, our everything, yes, Father. Hallelujah. So we just say that we love you, we appreciate yes, you, we worship you mm -hmm. and you alone, Father. We come to you, Father, for all things. We know that you are able. We know that you are capable. We love you. We appreciate you. In your name we do pray.